ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਸਾਰੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਪਿਆਰ ਭਰੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਹੋਸਟ ਆਸ਼ਮਿਤਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਲਾਈਵ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅੱਜ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅੱਜ ਇੱਕ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਦੁੱਖ ਭਰਾ ਸਮਾਂ ਚੱਲ ਰਿਹਾ ਇਸ ਮੁਲਕ ਦੀ ਮਿਲਟਰੀ ਆਰਮਡ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਸ and oh sare citizens jinna de freedoms liberties protected rendiyan is country di army karke aj oh sare morning de vich hege 13 us military service members kabul de aj de bomb blast de vich shaheed hoye han this is the casualty count as of now a program jis tarah ton dassya live tode naal pesh kar rahe hain eh developing story hai aaj swere kabul airport jithe kinne dinan to tonu dass rahe hain ke kis tarah da chaos baneya hoya hai loki evacuate karan di koshish kar rahe hain afghani locals american citizens military allied forces um work work loki jo afghanistan de vich taliban de control de under safe nahi feel karde oh ummeedwar ਉਸ ਏਰੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਭੀੜ ਲਾ ਕੇ ਖੜੇ ਹੋਏ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਇੱਥੋਂ ਕੱਢਿਆ ਜਾਊਗਾ ਤੇ ਅੱਜ ਸਵੇਰੇ ਦੋ ਸੂਸਾਈਡ ਬੰਬਰਸ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਗੇਟ ਦੇ ਅੱਗੇ ਐਬੀ ਗੇਟ ਉਸ ਏਰੀਆ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਹੈਗਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਮੈਪ ਵੀ ਦਿਖਾਵਾਂਗੇ ਉਸ ਗੇਟ ਅੱਗੇ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਲੋਕੀ ਖੜਦੇ ਐ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਚੈੱਕ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਐ ਕਾਬੂਲ 에어ਪੋਰਟ ਹਾਮਿਦ ਕਾਰਜ਼ਾਈ 에어ਪੋਰਟ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਵੜਨ ਦਾ ਉੱਥੇ ਇੱਕ ਸੂਸਾਈਡ ਬੰਬ ਡੈਟੋਨੇਟ ਹੋਇਆ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਭਿਆਨਕ ਸੀਨ ਪਿਕਚਰਾਂ ਵੀਡੀਓਜ਼ ਇਸ ਹਾਦਸੇ ਤੋਂ ਵੇਖਣ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਆਮ ਦਿਲ ਟੁੱਟਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਹਲੇ ਤੱਕ ਇੰਨੀ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਇਨਸਟੈਬਿਲਟੀ ਕਿ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਦੀ 20 ਸਾਲਾਂ ਦੀ ਇੰਗੇਜਮੈਂਟ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਵੀ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਹਾਲਾਤ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੈਗੇ ਐਂਡ ਆਫ ਕੋਰਸ ਇੰਨੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਸਵਾਲ ਉੱਠਦੇ ਆ ਕਿ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਡਿਪਾਰਚਰ ਤੇ ਇਲਜ਼ਾਮ ਲਾਇਆ ਜਾਏ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਮਿਲਟਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਪੁੱਛਿਆ ਜਾਏ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਰ ਕੀ ਰਹੇ ਸੀ ਪਿਛਲੇ 20 ਸਾਲਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਯਾ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਇੱਕ ਪਾਸੇ ਤਾਲਿਬਾਨ ਤੇ ਦੂਜੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਆਈਸਿਸ ਦੀ ਆਪ ਦੀ ਲੜਾਈ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਪਾਈ ਜਾਏ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਸਵਾਲਾਂ ਦੀ ਅੱਜ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਇਸ ਸਟੋਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਥੋੜੀ ਜਿਹੀ ਗਲੋਬਲ ਪਰਸਪੈਕਟਿਵ ਤੋਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਅੱਜ ਕਵਰ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਇਹਦੀ ਚਰਚਾ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਨਿਕਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਪਰ ਅੱਜ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਫੋਕਸ ਪਾਵਾਂਗੇ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਇਹ ਜੋ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੀ ਸਟੋਰੀ ਹੈ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਲਈ ਤਾਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਬਟ ਪੂਰੇ ਏਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਰੀਜਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਖਾਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੀ ਡਿਵੈਲਪਮੈਂਟਸ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਇੰਪੈਕਟ ਕਰੂੰਗੀ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲੀ ਫਰਮ ਅ ਆਰਮੀ ਮਿਲਟਰੀ ਪਰਸਪੈਕਟਿਵ ਅਮ ਇਨ ਸਾਈਡ ਜਿਹਾ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਔਰ ਗੈਸਟ ਟੁਨਾਈਟ ਇਸ ਜੁਆਇਨਿੰਗ ਅਸ ਫਰਮ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਤੇ ਮਾਨ ਮਹਿਸੂਸ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਫਿਰ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੋਏ ਸੋ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਜੁਆਇਨ ਮੀ ਇਨ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਲਾਈਵ ਟੁਨਾਈਟ ਲੂਟੈਨੈਂਟ ਜਨਰਲ ਪੀ ਜੇ ਐਸ ਪੰਨੂ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਜਨਰਲ ਪੰਨੂ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਸਤਿ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਜੀ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਅਸ਼ਮਿਤਾ ਬੜੀ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਹੋਈ ਦੁਆਰਾ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਤੇ ਆਨ ਕਰਕੇ ਖੈਰ ਮਾਹੌਲ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਅੱਛਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈਗਾ ਜੀ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਇਹੋ ਜਿਹੀਆਂ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਰਹਿੰਦੀਆਂ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਵਾਰਫੇਅਰ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਸਬਜੈਕਟ where there is always a victory defeat there is always something to celebrate and there is always something to regret but i suppose uh, this is how the world has been shaped around us ji um always something to celebrate and regret but certainly always something to study right uh, afghanistan is such an interesting case study i mean agar to see jo human life da toll hega unnu ik passe rakh ke agar is region di history bhi agar assi dekhde ha i mean countless superpowers over hundreds of years have tried unne koshish kiti hai afghanistan de utte aap da jidda keh lo m
ਉਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਤੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਾਨਕ ਦੇਵ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਬੜਾ ਅੱਛਾ ਇਹਦਾ ਬਿਆਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਖੁਰਸਾਨ ਖਸਮਾਨਾ ਕੀਆ ਹਿੰਦੁਸਤਾਨ ਡਰਾਇਆ ਆਪੇ ਦੋਸਤ ਨਾ ਦੇ ਕਰਤਾ ਜੰਮ ਕਰ ਮੁਗਲ ਚੜਾਇਆ ਐਤੀ ਮਾਰ ਪਈ ਕੁਰਲਾ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਕੀ ਦਰਦਾਂ ਆਇਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਬਿਆਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਕੁਰਸਾਨ ਏਰੀਆ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਅੱਜ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਆ ਇਲਾਕਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹਿੰਦੂਕੁਸ਼ ਮਾਊਂਟੇਨਸ ਦੇ ਪਰਲੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਹੈਗਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਬਾਬਰ ਨੇ ਉੱਥੋਂ ਚੜਾਈ ਕੀਤੀ ਤੇ ਉਹਨੇ ਹਿੰਦੂਕੁਸ਼ ਕ੍ਰਾਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਆ ਇੰਡਸ ਵੈਲੀ ਦੇ ਅੱਗੇ ਸਾਰਾ ਇਲਾਕਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਡਿਸਕ੍ਰਾਈਬ ਕੀਤਾ ਹਿੰਦੁਸਤਾਨ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕਿਹਾ ਵੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਹਿੰਦੁਸਤਾਨ ਡਰਾਇਆ ਤੇ ਹੀ ਅਨਲੀਸ਼ਡ ਅ ਰੀਪ ਆਫ ਟੈਰਰ and he is actually you know he was a god's man he he actually uh, was talking to god to say that why aren't you remorseful why don't you have pity on the humanity in hindustan that terror or terrorist like babur has come and you know established himself through terror so aaj di tarikh ch bhi tusi dekha jave ਉਹ ਜੀ ਲੋਕ ਸਿਰਫ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਕੋਲ ਗੰਸ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਮਾਡਰਨ ਨੇ ਬਟ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਐਟੀਚਿਊਡ ਚੇਂਜ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੋ ਖੁਰਾਸਾਨ ਦੇ ਅੰਦਰ ਅੱਜ ਤਾਲਿਬਾਨ ਦੁਬਾਰਾ ਆਇਆ ਹੈ ਵਿਦ ਅ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ ਐਟੀਚਿਊਡ ਐਂਡ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਟ એનર્ਜੀ ਆਫਟਰ ਸੋ ਕਾਲਡ ਯੂ ਕੈਨ ਸੇ ਦ ਬੈਟਲ ਆਫ ਸੀ ਸੋ ਹੈਪਨਸ ਬਟ ਸੋ ਕਾਲਡ ਡਿਫੀਟਿੰਗ ਅ ਸੁਪਰ ਪਾਵਰ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਥੈਟਸ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਵੈਰੀ ਬਿਗ ਟਰਨਿੰਗ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਜਨਰਲ ਪਨੁ ਯੂ نو ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਜੋ ਤਜਰਬਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਯੂਵ ਗਿਵਨ ਯੂ نو ਇਅਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਇਅਰਸ ਆਫ ਸਰਵਿਸ ਟੂ ਦ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਆਰਮੀ ਫਾਰਮਰ ਡੈਪਟੀ ਆਫ ਚੀਫ ਆਫ ਦ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਇੰਟੀਗ੍ਰੇਟਿਡ ਡਿਫੈਂਸ ਸਟਾਫ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਲਦਕ ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੀ ਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਪਾਵਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸੀਗੇ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਆਰਮੀ ਯੂ نو ਯੂ ਮੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਕੋਰਸਾਨ ਰਾਈਟ ਸੋ ਅੱਜ ਦੀ ਡੇਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤਾਲਿਬਾਨ ਨੂੰ ਹਰ ਇੱਕ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਕਿ ਤਾਲਿਬਾਨ ਦਾ ਕੀ ਰੋਲ ਹੈ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਪਿਛਲੇ 20 ਸਾਲਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਆਉਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੀ ਰੋਲ ਬਣਨ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਬਟ ਟੂਡੇ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਹੀਅਰਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਆਈਸਿਸ ਕੇ ਇਨ ਕੇਸ ਸਟੈਂਡਸ ਫਾਰ ਕੋਰਸਾਨ ਆਈਸਿਸ ਕੋਰਸਾਨ ਐਂਡ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਰਿਪੋਰਟਿੰਗ ਇਜ਼ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਦੈਟ ਜੋ ਆਈਸਿਸ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਇੰਨੀ ਬਿਟਰ ਰਾਈਵਲਰੀ ਤਾਲਿਬਾਨ ਲਈ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਆਈਸਿਸ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਵੀ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਸਖਤ ਇੱਕ ਇਸਲਾਮਿਕ ਰੂਲ ਇੱਕ ਕੈਲੀਫੇਟ establish karna chahndi hai how does this khorasan area factor into isis's methodology and jo ona the objective hai ga ithe um uh, ashwita you know uh, in simple language uh, afghanistan stands at the crossroads of the world in this area uh, it is on the crossroads geographically and more so important situationally mm-hmm. Well, if you really see crossroads is nothing but where the roads come and meet but these are roads to nowhere and these are roads to everywhere so therefore when you use a word crossroad it means there's a confusion there's a dilemma yeah. there is a problem of decision and even in minds of people they are on the crossroads so really speaking historically in the modern era we have hit on the crossroads of a situation where the great game yes. has been in play for hundreds of years yes. and the great game is like a seesaw so we do not know whether it is sea or saw at the moment but it is one of them because the history yes. seesaw has happened in this area for very very long yes. but i think this is the most terrible situation in the modern history yes. where today we stand at political diplomatic military uh situational uh, larger crossroads because i think the superpowers are taking a turn now uh, china was not a superpower earlier yes. but i think earlier it was to stop russia from coming in this area the western world got interested in the americans ultimately had to face this uh, attack on the mainland in america uh, which is uh, you know 911 famously called 911 yeah. uh, which happened over 20 years back yeah. and now uh, that is what brought the america to afghanistan to make sure that the origin of attack is where they should actually come and build a base so that the origin of attack itself gets destroyed to ona ne ki kita jado o itthe jinne vi jinna ne attack kita al qaeda basically operatives they were in afghanistan at that time uh, the history of taliban is also not very old also not very new because pakistan and america were actually hand in glove when they built up mujahideen and the uh, across hindu kush the relationship of taliban uh, really is that uh, they basically come from the same pakhtun region which is a stride you no know, hindu kush 
so so as a result there is a very deep seated interest of pakistan in making sure that they run their writ directly or indirectly more indirectly through taliban now because they don't want the americans or the indians or anybody who will not serve their interest well to be in afghanistan mm -hmm. so so really speaking this is a huge turn which has taken huge turn and i can say the most significant point even uh, beyond covid i would say is uh, the crossroads of afghanistan where the world has reached today and the witnessing the turn of events which has actually happened over a week the world has actually gone around so quickly within a week that we can really not miss or even we can continue to guess but not be able to figure out where exactly yes. it's going to land up very quickly absolutely I, I completely agree with you so much has happened in only a few days i mean kinni cheti kinni tezi de naal taliban ne pure afghanistan nu ik kism da overtake kar liya um especially considering the us presence is still there um but uh, general panu you mentioned a great point uh ki regionally pakistan hoye china hoye russia hoye and of course India how do they all factor into this equation yes there's a huge humanitarian crisis already stemming out of this uh, geopolitical crisis but largely from a strategic standpoint i want to talk about what india does next and what the implications will be for some of its global partners i take a chote ji break le rukde ha lieutenant general pjs pannu is with us tusi bhi kithe na ja live to nal is tarah gal jai rahegi break to us par ब्रेक तो बस आए स्वागत है तुम वेख रहे हो प्रोग्राम अज का मुद्दा लाइव तुम्हारे तो हाजिर हो अज गल हो रही है वंस अगैन ये बहुत ही ग्रीफ तो मैं कहगी हार्ट ब्रेकिंग न्यूज़ हैगी द यूनाइटिड स्टेट्स मिलटरी का सब तो डेडलीएसट दिन पिछले दस साल सब तो डेडली दिन अफगानिस्तान अज से पाँच दिन भी नहीं रह गए कि यूनाइट स्टेट्स का फाइनल डेट of exit from afghanistan aa jauga and aj military members american service members jo ke afghani locals nu hor american citizens nu journalists nu families nu bachcha nu safety tak pahuncha rahe si kabul airport de agge ohna te hamla hoya ek suicide bomber ne attack kita do suicide bombers in fact is vele 13 American military members have lost their lives and over 120 allegedly reported Afghani locals have lost their lives but once again a masla sirf US army US international relations nu nahi affect karda a masla us region de vich ki role play kar raha hai khaas karke India le jithe Pakistan di gal ho rahi si India di vi gal karange sad naal jude han India to Lieutenant General P J S Pannu. Ek bari fir General Pannu, uh, I'd love to welcome you back to the program. Uh, General Pannu, to see uh, break to pehle ek bahut interesting gal chedi si ke um ek jo vacuum create hoya hai, ode vich of course Pakistan di nazar hai gi. I mean there's a lot of power players in that region. China, Russia, Pakistan, Iran that are looking to seek Afghanistan de vich, um, you know, how can they get their pound of flesh so to speak? But main India di gal tar nal karna chahndi and before we talk about India strategically uh I want to talk about the US India relationship in regards to this development uh jo united states ek uh, competition which hega to gain influence in this in this region and recently we've seen that through formations like the quad jithe to see um is program which kafi sanu jankari provide ki thi um the grouping of australia japan india and the united states to counterbalance against china right how does the united states botched exit from afghanistan affect the alliance and affect the united states influence in the region uh, ashwita it is very clear and uh, it is being spoken all over the world that this is i think a foreign policy blunder um of the western world led by the americans um when i say western world it means uh, nato and western countries have actually not had any traction to be giving any staying power on their own in the afghanistan uh, region as a result if the americans are withdrawing well nato seems to be completely crumbling 
So as a result, there is an understanding of the world that if the Americans could make a foreign policy blunder, not uh, actually a military blunder, Gee. but it is an impact on the military's pullout. And that creates a military situation. So a foreign policy blunder very, very clearly has created a military problem. And as a result, when you talk about Quad, which is not yet a military alliance, it is a political alliance. Gee. And it is a commonality of interest where a lot of cobbling uh, and uh, commonality of interest and trust on one another is uh, the prime uh, basis on which you have alliance with anybody. So when there is a question mark on a jerky decision which can be made by a country, I think there would always be a rethink in larger intention of a country which was considered to be providing a very stable platform, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not regionally but also in the world. Gee. So so as a result, you spoke about Quad. So, then you don't know whether you need to go to a dentist or you, or it will be on self-healing. But I think this is much, much more serious than that. Yeah. Uh, the strongest partner in Quad uh, has actually put everybody in a doubt uh, whether they have an interest which is wavering or they have an interest which is elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But I think the world cannot be so wrong that the Western powers led by the U.S. has actually gone into a question mark. I hope it is a temporary situation, but it may have a long-term or a medium-term impact on how nations are going to do the business. Uh, General Panu, does this strengthen India's uh, role in the Quad or in general in that region? Uh, India is someone that is of interest to Western allies, right? Maybe even more so now. Um, is the Saudi Afghanistan, the debacle to baad, crisis to baad, India the position globally from a strategic standpoint, in what direction does it move? I think the positioning of India is more and more significant because uh, actually the problem is uh, next to the Indian borders. FPAC region is a problem which is of the Indian subcontinent or South Asian region where India actually is a prime driver and uh, our location is also such that in the Indian subcontinent, uh, FPAC region having this kind of a problem is actually an Indian problem to a great extent. Mm -hmm. It is just because that the borders have been managed well, we don't feel the heat directly. Gee. But I think the heat is too far, uh, you know, in, in how you feel it, but it is too close when you actually realize it. Gee, gee. Um, General Panu, uh, let's shift the focus a little bit further west then. Let's talk about Pakistan. Um, once again, from a military standpoint, is really Pakistan the upper echelons, de which una the leadership, the jo private closed door meetings, what are they discussing in terms of this Afghanistan situation? Is it a crisis or an opportunity? And if you had to, uh, you know, share opinions with us on this, uh, what direction do you think those conversations are going? I think, Ashwita, uh, you know that Pakistan, including the Prime Minister of Pakistan, celebrated the victory of the victory of Taliban. Uh, it is not that it is a takeover, but it was an outright victory, and they. Uh, celebrated in a manner as, as if it was their own victory. So, Taliban uh, relationship-wise, you know, if you see, uh, it is a brainchild of Pakistan, and they would want that Taliban should remain a puppet, which is a very difficult puppet to handle, uh, and establish its government and regime in Afghanistan through the Haqqanis. Uh, so as a result, what is happening today is that for years together that Pakistan wanted control of Afghanistan, their short-term understanding is that they have gained immensely and that is an opportunity. Wow. But I think the trouble is how stable a government of Afga uh, Taliban uh, is going to provide to Afghanistan. Gee. And if that is going to be unstable and Afghanistan becomes uh, again or AFPAC region becomes again a uh, center of terrorism and that is from where you will find that breeding of terrorism will engulf the world and I think that is where the focus of the world must come to. That earlier it, it used to be just brute force of terrorism I think combined with technology 
and also entering off the other powers, you know, first Pakistan, behind which is closely, you know, uh, you can say uh, aligned is the China and also Russia. So this is how the echelons are taking place, you know, with different interests, Gee. but there is a commonality of interests. I'm, so I'm, largely, I'm, yeah, I'm, largely you will find that this great game has exchanged hands to a point that the American exit has created a vacuum where the Chinese and the Russians would go in. And a global war on terrorism is going to be actually seen from a very, very different perspective because the Chinese and the Russians are also suffering at the hands of uh, the Muslim uh, terrorists. Uh, at the same time, they would want this area to be under their control. So I think it is going to be an opportunity and a threat in combination, which is a very, very dangerous situation. Right. It seems volatile, right? Um, you can't plan around something that you cannot predict. Um, General, you, you mentioned something very interesting um, that Taliban, the jo, um, victory hagi, unu kai areas de which celebrate kita ja rahe, right? And um, certainly with Pakistan, uh, that is one such region. Uh, General Panu, we keep hearing these stories that this is not the Taliban of 20 years ago, uh, that their main goal was to rid Afghanistan of oppressors or outsiders looking to take advantage of its strategic role in the world and its people. Um, and, and now they've kind of gotten their wish, right? Um, but for the Taliban to be truly successful, uh, you know, to some extent, will they not need to rely on international powers, Western allies, to get basic things? I mean, they have one of the worst hunger crises right now, um, whether it's em um, employment, whether it's basic civil society, a lot of which is abandoning the country, desperate to flee. Um, you know, women's rights is one thing, education, sciences, all of these things need to be addressed. And it seems like in a country that is war torn normally you have outside help that helps you kind of get through these times so do you feel that the taliban can either go on without outside help or in a you know even bizarre turn of events get outside help to move forward uh, ashwita this is actually a man-made disaster there's a huge humanitarian crisis which has happened yeah and the normal afghani uh, national who's actually an innocent, you know, uh, people, you know, trying to uh, make their livelihood, you know, from day to day, you know, uh, look for jobs and struggle to get education. I think largely an ordinary Afghani has been in a crossfire of power and ideology. And I think uh, none of these have suited. Anybody who came to power became corrupt, uh, more power, more corrupt. As a result, when the foreign powers come in, then the ideology starts cutting the power back to ask these people to come back into the fold of ideology and then to side the terrorists uh, who actually sell ideology but also want to control. The ultimate aim through ideology is also to uh, subpar. Um, with Pakistan deeply involved in it, uh, though they have been saying that they need a strategic depth vis-a-vis -vis India, but I think if you really see the Indian interests and what Indians have done over a period of time to Afghanistan is only through soft power. Mm. They, uh, Indians have only gone there to build roads, dams, and the parliament, or the infrastructure, like electricity. Uh, as a result, when the Indians uh, use their soft power, it means only for the development of Afghanistan, they don't pick and choose who the Afghan national is. Afghan national is those who reside in Afghanistan have all have had the fruits of Indian presence. But Pakistan, per se, has never used soft power. They have always used a hard power mm -hmm. uh, to take uh, power through force, uh, and that too by proxy. And yes. Pakistan is actually hated uh, uh, and disliked by uh, ordinary Afghani because they know that they come and use their muscle and power only for serving their narrow interests. Uh, so as a result, Pakistan does not like Indians' uh, presence there because uh, people love Indians. Uh, my mind goes back to an old movie where, you know, there is a very famous song uh, of Kabili Wala, uh, You know, this is, uh, in India, 
there is a friendship, a very close relationship and warmth between uh, Afghanistan people of Afghanistan and Indians. Uh, Pakistan does not appreciate that. And as a result, uh, today the Chinese are on the Indian borders, the Pakistanis are active on the Indian borders. Yes. Uh, Americans have actually gone in for a retreat. Uh, for Indians, the Chinese and the Pakistani success uh, at least at the moment, you know, when you talk about moral success, we do not know what success ultimately will lie and how it will be achieved and demonstrated. But I think today the Chinese and the Pakistanis and the Talibanis and the terrorists are on a moral high ground. And I think terrorists have come back to threaten the world. And this time it is going to be very different. Earlier, uh, the Western world was powerful enough to continuously, uh, you know, uh, make sure that they suppress the elements of terrorism coming from anywhere in the world. But I think today, the, even the terrorists are celebrating that they have actually made a superpower retreat. I mean, in the optics of this, right? Uh, I mean, th th there's such powerful images coming out that you are right. I mean, even if the reality on the ground is what it is, the optics look so bad. Uh, I, I want to talk to you tactically. Ground the kistanai cheese develop What we can expect in the coming weeks? Um, one more small break here, Lieutenant General. Uh, please stay with us, viewers. To see is it na sadnal jure ro conversation jai regi break those spot. More hazard hoya gal ho rahi hai ki kis tana Afghanistan de vich din bar din situation kinni destabilize ho rahi hai. Aaj swere Kabul de vich do suicide bombers ne attack kita airport de darwaje de agge jithe inni bheed si loki desperately koshish kar rahe si airport de vich vadan di taaki unna nu kisi flight te paya jaye. इस अटैक के विच 13 यूएस मिलिट्री मेंबर्स दी जाना गई हैं 120 अफगानी लोकल्स इस वेले रिपोर्टेड है कि ये डेवलपिंग स्टोरी है यू नो बट देयरस टैक्टिकल रियलिटीज ऑन द ग्राउंड जो इस वेले काबुल दे विच हले भी जिथे यूएस मिलिट्री दी प्रेजेंस हैगी उना नु जेल नहीं पैरी आई वांट टू टॉक अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट दिस साडे गेस्ट लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल पीजेएस पन्नू इंडिया तो साडे नाल जुड़े हैं जनरल पन्नू यू वर टॉकिंग अबाउट the optics, right? Ki kis tana, I mean, in a vade scale te, idda lag raha hai ki the terrorists are winning, right? Um, before I talk to you a little bit about the, the, the tactical realities, jo US military nu jhel ni pahari hai, let's talk a little bit about the actual attacks, right? Um, is tana da attack, e kaya gaya si ki ede vare uh, reporting ditti gai si military nu, that una de kuch, uh, intelligence affiliates jo ground de vich information gather kar rahe unhone dasya si that it's not a matter of if ki ya ye attack hoega ya nahi it's a matter of when ki ye attack kado hoega so tell us from a military standpoint the significance is attack the aj di date de vich panj din reh gaye it's the, the the evening of the 26th here in the united states the 31st next tuesday is the deadline for full departure what is the significance of today's bombing? Uh, Ashmita, very uh, appropriate question. Uh, today, the Kabul airfield actually is being managed, controlled, and uh, the entire uh, secure zone is around the Kabul uh, uh, airfield, provided by the US military. What is happening is that those who want to exit the country are all around the uh, Kabul uh, air, airfield. Uh, the Americans are the only ones who are pulling them across the wall or through the gates and checking the documents. And there is a human tragedy where those who want to exit are making everybody's life, their own life, uh, more and more difficult and in harm's way because one is that they have left home. They have no idea where they're headed. And also, there is a threat whether they would live this way or that way. I think uh, it's like saying, you know, please select how you would want to perish. So this is a huge human tragedy where the Americans were the only soft spot who were giving some amount of hope to the average Afghani who was wanting to leave the country because they did not want the Taliban uh, radical uh, governance more so for women, you know, 50% of the population almost comprises women, uh, that they are going to be at the receiving end from the Taliban forces and Taliban government. Uh, 
So as a result, when this exit is happening, and the only hope is United States, uh, this was, I think, not tactical, but I think strategic bombing, in which there will be more chaos around the airfield because every person who is looking for an exit would be also suspected to be carrying a bomb, which is going to create a huge complication for the Americans to start uh, scanning every individual who is in close vicinity of the American troops. It is most difficult or near impossible mission to scan every person uh, from being a potential terrorist or whether uh, he or she is somebody who genuinely needs help. So this is now a larger chaos. So what is going to happen is that Americans who are supposed to be staying or are supposed to be staying there the, till the end of the month either would beat a hasty retreat, which is a hope that maybe the terrorists have, and they would shut down the airport and exit from there, because uh, the Talib Taliban and the terrorists must be emboldened that to do something to make a very, very hasty exit, and uh, the Americans would even make more mistakes. Or it can even reverse the situation, because with the uh, airstrip still under the control of the Americans, should the Western world decide they can come back. But if they exit on 31st of August, they can't come back because this is going to be shut forever. So this uh, you know, time of next few days is so critical for the world to watch. Uh, it is make or break situation. Either they exit and there is a large human tragedy which will unfold here and after, or the Western world largely those who want to support the normal Afghani people can also decide to use the airstrip to come back, rebuild, and secure themselves, secure the Afghani people, and delay uh, the process of uh, so-called hasty withdrawal, which was happening. But also, they have this opportunity to come back and reclaim uh, the uh, image, which is now taking a beating all over the world of the Americans. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to talk about that because the President Biden and he came off as that um, he certainly presented an image of a of a strong, fearless leader saying that we will avenge this attack. We will find you. You know, we will not forgive. We will not forget. But before we go there, uh, so one of the things that you said was the the thought, the carefulness, the complexity of this attack, right? And you're right. To some extent, it was to sow chaos and distrust. In fact, what, what you're saying about um, American forces searching those individuals before they let them inside the airport grounds, one of the suicide bombers was getting searched by military personnel at Abbey Gate when he detonated. And uh, that is why there's been such a large American service member casualty. So, you know, this makes the Americans' job extremely difficult um, in the next few days. It makes, you know, life so much harder for those Afghani locals that are desperate to get out. Um, I was watching one uh, TV interview today, a, a former general from, from the American army commented saying that, you know, even though the Taliban and ISIS are sworn enemies, that a, a, an attack of this complexity, um, it was planned out strategically, the locations, um, you know, exactly like you said, to sow the most chaos, the most confusion, the most residual casualties, um, you know, that even though that ISIS has claimed uh, unani responsibility TS attack the that the Taliban to some extent had to have known uh, do you agree with this statement general um, Ashwita when there is uh, you know uh, too many groups uh, intelligence groups and terrorist groups working at cross purposes there is always a deception and there is always a psychological game which goes around it uh, sometimes they put out something which people must know, and sometimes it is put out in a manner that people should not know, which is disinformation. Uh, in chaos, uh, it is only a strategy to create more chaos and chaos rather than bring clarity in chaos. Uh, at the moment, it would suit everybody's interest who is against the Americans to build chaos into chaos. And it is in the American interest to make sure that chaos is more brought into clarity. So as a result, now it is a tipping point for the U.S. And if the president himself has made a statement, then sometimes I feel it is better to attack rather than to defend. 
right. for Americans is an opportunity to Jeez. go forward, rebuild again, and reclaim, rather than to make make a hasty withdrawal, which will now, you know, history will they will be in the wrong side of the history. They will never be able to reclaim uh, that superpower status if they beat a hasty retreat. I think this is an opportunity and also a huge threat. I think this is a tipping point. A, a huge dilemma for President Biden. Uh, does he take on the role of nation building, like you said, agar uh, is situation with that chart, it's like running away with your tail in between your legs. Or on the other hand, like you said, do they, you know, leave and forever sacrifice their, their place in the world um, as a superpower? I, I, I want to talk about that uh, in our closing segment. Uh, Lieutenant General, please stick around. Gal, bohut interesting tarnal hori. I have more things to, to ask of you. Viewers, this is a conversation. This is how it will go. More questions, more information, share it and break those apart. Mood Hazir Hoya, Lieutenant General PJ S. Pannu. I want to bring you right back into this conversation. Today, the question is very much. The time is not much. We want to talk about the callers as well. General Pannu, as someone who was, uh, you know, in a strategic uh, position of power and advisement, uh, to a large-scale governmental operation, to the military, the Galandi. Uh, I, I want to get your views on President Biden. Right uh, before the break, uh, is a dilemma the Galhori see. You know, President Biden has made remarks again. Jado aj unani is Kabul bombing the bare um, speech the uh, statement President al the He said, "We will not forgive. We will not forget." Upon our time, te, apne choosing of location and moment, we will find those responsible and avenge the deaths of our military service members. Uh, but that kind of leaves a big question mark on what happens to the rest of Afghanistan, the region. Uh, before we even get long term, what happens in the next few days? General Pannu, agli char dina de vich. What do you, you know, what do you foresee the U.S. government? What kind of action will they be taking? military You know, this attack has certainly sowed the seeds of chaos and distrust. Um, it's made the process much more difficult. How does the U.S. military, how does President Biden maneuver the next few days without looking like a weak leader? Uh, Ashmita, extremely relevant. It's a statement made by a political leader. So it is a political statement. And more so born out of preserving his personal reputation, which is actually taking a big beating uh, all over the world, even in U.S. So as a result, if he did not make a strong statement now, uh, people are blaming him for weakness, and that would have got actually sealed, that yes, he has actually let down the American soldier. Today, for him, if he has made a political statement, people are going to be actually watching that how does he translate his political statement into intent, which is not only military, but also largely he has to rally the strength of the other political leaders around him to make sure that the reputation of the Western world, led by the U.S., uh, goes uh, into a very, very quick U-turn into a salvaging of uh, image. Now, this is not easy because the time uh, limit that they have put is their own of their own choosing. Uh, nobody in the world told them to actually get out by 31st of this month. Uh, this is their own choosing. These are their own declarations. Um, they have done only one thing seriously, that is the drawdown and withdrawal. The rest, everything else is not something where people are very confident about. Uh, at the moment, there is only one thing that one can look at is that whatever happened in Afghanistan was born out of political but not military weakness. So it means that there is military strength, but the political will must support the military strength, uh, not the other way around. Uh, the military would want to come back and salvage their position, mm -hmm. provided the political masters are not holding them back. This mm -hmm. is a huge test for the uh, political class in the United States. Uh, if there is a tussle within, they have to sort that out very, very quickly. Yes. But 
I think largely it is the day for America to get their image as how they built it uh, or how they built towards it for decades and decades on. Absolutely. It took them 15 years to reclaim their image after Saigon. Uh, when they came out and uh, from uh, Vietnam, Gee. for 15 years, they actually could not do anything which was credible or trustworthy because nobody impressed the, uh, you know, the world what America did. It is only during the Gulf War yes. that the American, you know, it was all on the television. It was called the media war, the yes. technology, the military, all the demonstrations went in. And the Americans actually brought the credibility back the credibility actually comes back on three things. One is technology, second is money, that is education. Absolutely. But largely the demonstration which you said, optics. optics. Optics is something where the technology was visible in Gulf War. Gee. They had the, had the capacity to spend money. Uh, it is the education which actually brought the whole world to the American because you know, a lot of students went to America to do uh, higher studies, yes. and that sucked in huge amount of global, you know, we, we can say the brain, uh, you know, uh, brain. brain from the other countries yes. and brain yes. gain yes. by the Americans. So that Thank brain you. gain happened because of education. Yes. But this is a movement which America must understand that if they have to bring this kind of a gravitas back, Gee. they have only very, very, very limited time. General Pannu, I, I still have so many questions for you, um, but kuch callers bhi sadnal jur chuke, ho bhi to adnal gal karna chandhe. Sistrikal, to see on air ho. तालिबान ने ऑलरेडी ਤੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਫਿਰ ਵੀ ਅਨਾਉਂਸਮੈਂਟ ਕਰੀ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਸੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੱਢਣਾ ਹੈ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੱਢਣਾ ਹੈ ਹੋ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਤਾਲਿਬਾਨ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਜਾਣ ਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਥੋੜਾ ਡਰਾਉਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਵੱਡਾ ਖੇਲ ਖੇਡ ਲਿਆ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੁਇਸਾਈਡਲ ਬੰਬਰ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਆਸਾਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਕੋਈ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਅਲ ਕਾਇਦਾ ਵਾਲੇ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਵਾਲੇ ਕੋਈ ਬੰਦੇ ਇੰਨੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਸਿਕਿਉਰਿਟੀ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਤਾਲਿਬਾਨ ਦੀ ਉਹ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਅੰਦਰ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਇਹ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਹੈ ਤਾਲਿਬਾਨ ਨੇ ਖੁਦ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਰੋਕਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬੰਬ ਬਲਾਸਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਖੁਦ ਕਰਾਇਆ ਕਿ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਰਮੀ ਵਾਲੇ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਵੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਨਿਕਲ ਜਾਣ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਈ ਲਫੋਰ ਨਾ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਜਾਣ ਤੇ ਦੂਸਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਦੂਸਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਤਨਾ ਇਜ਼ਰਾਈਲ ਦੇਖੋ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਸਟਰੋਂਗ ਹੈਗਾ ਇੰਟੈਲੀਜੈਂਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੇ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਵੀ ਚਾਹੇ ਜਾਂ ਅਲ ਕਾਇਦਾ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਵੀ ਨਵਾਲ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਖਤਮ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਤੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੈਠ ਕੇ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਜਿਤਨਾ ਇਜ਼ਰਾਈਲ ਨੇ ਇਜ਼ਾਨ ਦੇ ਉਹ ਜਨਰਲ ਮਰਵਾਇਆ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਬੈਠ ਕੁਝ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਆਪਣੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਬੰਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਸੀ ਆਈਡੀਆ ਬੰਦੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੈਸੇ ਪੂਰੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਕਰਾ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਸੌਰੀ ਸਮਾਂ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਇੱਥੇ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਇਜਾਜ਼ਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਯੂ ਮੇਡ ਟੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਪੋਰਟੈਂਟ ਪੁਆਇੰਟਸ ਜਨਰਲ ਪੰਨੂ ਜਾਣੇ ਆਂਦੇ ਰੀਲੀ ਕੁਇਕਲੀ ਆਈ ਵਾਂਟ ਯੂਰ ਕਮੈਂਟ ਆਨ ਜੋ ਸਾਡੇ ਕਾਲਰ ਦਾ ਅਖੀਰ ਦਾ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਸੀਗਾ ਦੈਟ ਦ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਹੈਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲੀ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਦ ਬੈਸਟ ਇੰਟੈਲੀਜੈਂਸ ਐਪਰਾਟਿਸਸ ਇਨ ਦ ਵਰਲਡ ਇਟਸ ਲਾਈਕ ਯੂ ਸੈਡ ਇਟਸ ਦ ਆਪਟਿਕਸ ਅਗਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਟਰੈਂਥ ਅਜਮਾਨੀ ਹੋਈ ਦਿਖਾਨੀ ਹੋਈ ਦਿਖਾ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਬਟ ਇਫ ਵਾਟ ਦ ਕਾਲਰ ਇਜ਼ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਇਜ਼ ਟਰੂ ਪਿਛਲੇ 20 ਸਾਲਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਖਤਮ ਕਿਉਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੀਤਾ ਵਾਈ ਇਜ਼ ਟੈਰਰਿਜ਼ਮ ਵਾਈ ਆਰ ਥੀਸ ਐਕਸਟ੍ਰੀਮਿਸਟ ਗਰੁੱਪਸ ਸਟਿਲ ਅ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਟੁਡੇ ਇਫ ਦ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਵਾਸ ਸਚ ਅ ਸੁਪਰ ਪਾਵਰ uh ashmita uh, the uh, taste of the pudding dies in eating uh, uh you giving credit to the intelligence uh, power and the capability of the united states uh, yes i would agree but it was not demonstrated enough in this uh, withdrawal uh, there was a failure or if the intelligence came then it is certainly a political disaster because if even if the intelligence came and gave certain prescriptions to the president not to withdraw and if he did uh, i think then then it is a blunder uh, that the president will have to live with it for uh, very very long but yeah. even now if he allows his intelligence agencies and his advisors and the military to take decisions uh, i suppose even then there is a reclaim but i certainly would agree that
uh, to the terrorists today, which makes the situation extremely complicated. Absolutely true. In fact, uh, one of the reports said that the United States forces are actually destroying Jonah the Aslahega, their arsenal, instead of trying to ship it out because they're so afraid it will get into the hands of the wrong folks. Lieutenant General PJS Pannu joining us from India. General, thank you so much for taking the time for this elucidating conversation. And is the whole de which you see, Sanu, up the perspective that I we really appreciate. It. Thank you. Thank you again. And do join us soon. The story is definitely going to be around for a little bit, unfortunately. Have a good rest of your day, sir. Satsrikal. Thank you, Ashmita. Thank you for getting me over. Satsrikal. And uh, viewers, I want to say that this is the story once again. This story is developing. We are reporting on our news and we are doing a report. One quick message, John. So, first, you have seen social media. I have seen it. I have not seen it. I have not seen it. कुछ वेल इंटेंशन वधिया इंटेंशन दे नाल लोग की जो साड़ी सिख एंड हिंदू परिवार कम्युनिटीज इंडिविजुअल्स अफगानिस्तान दे विच हले भी फंसे हुए हैं उन आदे बारे इनफॉरमेशन शेयर करें सोशल मीडिया ते उन अनुए के हेल्प करने दे तौर ते बट राइट नाउ अगर तो आदे कोल एहो जी कोई भी इनफॉरमेशन इन मंद हो सकती है, बहुत ही डेंजरस हो सकती है। सो डोंट डू दैट राइट नाउ। जब तो वो सेफली अफगानिस्तान तो एक्सिट कर जान, देन यू कैन पोस्ट, यू कैन शेयर। इधर नाली प्रोग्राम दिस वापस कर दे। सर्दी सर्दी गेस्ट कोई क्वेश्चंस, कमेंट्स, कंसर्न तो जरूर सानू लिख सकते हो इनफॉर जस्ट ब्रॉडकास्टिंग